many volts difference. Yeah? And don't worry, there's no such thing as too much of antioxidants. Because you are breathing, aren't you not? And you are breathing polluted air. And you are eating a lot of stuff which is, you know, which has got lots of free radical inside. So every second there's a lot of free radical damage. Okay? So don't let uh, anyone ever scare you, oh too much of antioxidants is no good. No, too much of this water is never harmful. Okay? That's one. Next, what did I say? Acidosis, right? Acidosis. Too much of acidity in your system. So you could ask yourself, how does this happen? How does I don't go around drinking acid, right? But I not. So you think, oh, how does this happen? It happens because the metabolic activity in your system, the byproduct of that metabolic activity is acidic waste. And the only way the body can get rid of acidic waste is by using water. Water is the medium by which water, your body will have nutrients brought in and waste matter taken out. So if you are not drinking enough water, your body will become acidic. Dr. Theodore A. Barodi said this, all disease comes from the same root cause, which is too much acidity. So the first reason is, first reason was oxidative stress. The second reason, major reason is too much of acidity. He said it very simply in his book, alkalize or die. How much more aminos can it get? Okay. You've got reverse aging. Sang Wang said this, he said, removing acidic waste is more effective than diet or exercise. Okay. Because he said this because when your body is too acidic, it goes into fat storage. So if you want to lose weight, be more alkaline. Your body will naturally lose weight. Which is experienced by all those people taking this water. They actually lose weight naturally. The other reason is because too much acidity causes you to be sick. So if you are dieting and exercising to stay healthy, well he said this, just remove your acidic waste and you will be a lot more healthier. Okay. Then you've got this, all these little quotations. I need you all to read it. Okay? That's by Theodore Baroli, the one, the guy who wrote the other book, Alkalize or Die. But most importantly, the mother of all discovery was made not yesterday or today or one year ago. It was done, it was made in 1923 by this guy called Otto Heinrich Wobber. In 1923, he published a report in the metastasis, metastasis of, uh, sorry, metabolism of tumors. He demonstrated that all forms of cancer are caused by acidosis and hypoxia. Acidosis is too much acidity. Hypoxia is lack of oxygen. And he said, in a nutshell, he said this, he said, cancerous cells are acidic and healthy cells are alkaline. Okay, he said, if you take a normal cell and deprive it of 35% of oxygen, within 48 hours, that cell will become cancerous. So let me ask you a question. Do you want to be acidic or do you want to be alkaline? Yeah? But the problem is this. Our lifestyle, the way we live it, the kind of food we eat, the kind of drinks we drink, there's always a lot of acidic forces pushing us to be acidic. Which is why you've got a rise of so much of illnesses and degenerative diseases. Okay? So you want to be alkaline. Um, let me ask you a question. In a, in, a, in a situation where you are constantly pushed towards the acidic spectrum, you see, the metabolism throws out acidic waste. So your body tends to get acidic. If you sleep late, your body becomes acidic. How many of you sleep late? Yeah? If you, if you get stressed out, your body becomes acidic. If you're stressed out, how many of you don't have stress at all? Yeah? If you get angry, your body becomes acidic. You don't drink enough water, your body becomes acidic. So there's so much, and the food that you eat, most of the food that you eat out there, they're all acidic. Very difficult to make alkaline food. If you really want to know, ask Wendy, who's sitting on there, she's an expert in cooking alkaline food. Okay? Very little. Whatever food that you eat out there is acidic. Does it also make sense that the water you drink is also acidic? Does it make sense to continue drinking acidic water? No, right? It doesn't, right? So you want to know right, what kind of water you've been drinking and whether it's acidic or alkaline. Am I right? Yeah? Think about this. Look at this first, yeah? This is all the diseases attributed to acidosis or too much acidity. Okay? Look at any one of them. I'm sure you'll identify some people. Okay. 
So, remember this. pH of green is neutral. Anything that's on the red spectrum towards the orange and the red is acidic and it needs sickness. Okay? And anything on the purple side, blue and purple, is alkaline. What do I mean by that? You see, we use this thing called the litmus solution. How many of you know what's litmus solution? Do you know? Don't know? Okay. It measures the acidity or alkalinity. Very simple. It looks orangey, but when I put it into all the varying waters, it will change color. Okay? If the color is more towards the blue spectrum, it is alkaline. That substance is alkaline. If it's more towards the orange spectrum, it is acidic. Simple enough? So you see by the color whether these waters are acidic or alkaline. Okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a few drops into it. Okay? Just remember this. Acidic, red color is bad. Alkaline, more, that shows green because of the thing, but actually it should be purple. Yeah? So let's look at that. So I'm going to drop a few drops into each one of it. Okay? Almost a, it doesn't matter how many drops I drop because it just reacts to the water and it changes color. Okay, so for the last one, I'm just going to, going to keep it there for a while and we're going to stir it up, okay? Just look at this. Now, what is this? Alkaline or acidic? Yeah? Very highly acidic. Okay? What is this? This is your 100 plus. Marketing says it's good for you, right? Drink and drink and whatever. Right? What is this? This is just another distilled water. It is still very much acidic. Now this water doesn't it doesn't seem to be too bad because it is a little bit blue. Yeah? Which means it's a bit more on the alkaline spectrum. Tap water is normally a bit neutral or whatever, but don't get fooled, huh? Because all the pipes they put a chemical compound called lime. Because if the water is too acidic, it will corrode the pipes. So they put lime. So if you take this water and you boil it, the lime kind of like disappears and then you see the color, it will be more yellowish. So it's a bit more acidic. It's only, uh, it looks alkaline because of a uh, chemical mixture of lime. Now look at this. You've seen all of that. Now what is that? What is that? The difference is like between night and day, isn't it? Completely night and day. So my question to you again is this. In we are faced with too much of acidity. We are always fighting forces of acidity. Does it make sense to continue to drink something which is acidic to add further to it? Or would you rather drink alkaline? If you go out there, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Some of them will say, oh, our body's pH must be about 7.48. That's a balance. So if you drink 9.5 alkaline, it's too much alkaline, it's bad for you and all that. Don't listen to all those things because the fact is that you are always pushed towards the acidic spectrum. So drinking 9.5 alkaline barely brings you back to that, that alkaline pH that you need. We know nothing has happened because the founder of this company, Mr. Hironari Oshiro, has been drinking for 20 over years and at 73 years old, he's up there on the stage dancing about with a lot of energy. Okay, at 73 or 74. If you see his picture or ask the person here to show you the picture, you will know. I would rather take his lifestyle anytime at 73 being on stage dancing around. Because at 73, 74, I know how my mother was. Needed the support of the maid and stuff like that. Okay? So, this is what we try and tell people. Okay? I'm going to do something else. All of you, all this while, have been drinking... Uh, okay. I'm going to pour this because I just want you to see that it is not, there's no colouring in this water. Yeah? Until I'm very thirsty, but so. Okay. If you've been drinking any one of this water all your life, your body is at varying pH. Some people would be drinking only this all the time. Okay? A lot of damage. So, all we try and tell is if you continue to drink this water from now onwards, you will change your body's pH. Bit by bit by bit, you will change it. You will bring it from a very unhealthy state to a healthy state. This is purple. In case you are wondering whether royal purple is healthy or not, they say royal blood because of that. Okay? <laughs> now, but, but take a look at this. I just want you to see this, yeah? Because when I saw this in November of 2011, I stopped drinking all of this stuff. 
I used to drink a lot of this because thinking that it's going to give me a lot of energy. But these fellows are so acidic that no matter what I try and do, it's very difficult to change his acidity. Can you see that? It's very, very, very difficult to change his acidity. In fact, one portion of this, you need about 30 portions of kangen, strong, uh, this 9.5 kangen water to neutralize it. Okay? Even this is the same. Both of these fellows add, introduce so much of acidity in your system. Now let me ask you again. In a, in, a, in a time when we are really fighting to try and stay alkaline, do we need to add this? Do we need to compound it? You see, it's diluted, right? Am I right? Very diluted, isn't it? Let me dilute it a bit more. Still, still orangey, still orangey, right? But watch what happens. Because sometimes when you go to a party or, rest, or what you, a, a wedding or whatever, they got nothing else and you say, oh right, what, how much damage can I get? I'll have a sip or two. Watch. And even this. Mind you, this was diluted. And no matter how much how diluted it was, it immediately changed your body back to acidity. That's, that's how potent these fellows are. And it's very bad. So do you want to continue drinking this? <laughs> so we say bring the kids here, show them this, you know, frighten them. Frighten the hell out of them. Yeah? Now you've seen that. Is that useful? Does this information? Is it useful? Is it powerful? And we didn't know that, right? You guys didn't know that. I didn't know that until until November. Now I know. Now that you know, you've got a choice. You're not saying completely, you know, go the other way and all that. I still drink my coffee. I still drink my liquors once in a while. But I know what I'm doing. And I have got a solution at home. Do you? Do you? Yeah, it's a different thing altogether. So, I, I don't drink it at all. But I can help it. I never touch this anymore. I used to drink a lot of this because I got introduced to this when I ran the marathon back in 1986. Okay? And I, that's when this, this drink came in, into being. It wasn't carbonated. You know, it had this and, and I used to drink a lot of it. Thinking that it gave me a lot of energy. Today, my daughter drinking that alkaline water says that she's got more energy playing tennis than when she was drinking this. And you run, at the end of this presentation, you will understand why. Okay? Any questions so far? Any question? So we have covered uh, we've covered oxidative stress, one of the major reasons why people fall sick, one of the major reasons contributing to degenerative diseases. We've covered acidosis or too much acidity. Third one is called dehydration or lack of water. What, was that that bad? <laughs> okay. Dehydration or lack of water. Okay. As I told you earlier, the fact that you, you are alive means as metabolism. And metabolism throws out acidic waste. And the only way in which the, water, the body can get rid of this acidic waste is through water. But we all know and we all have been told, everywhere you can see, that you need to drink 8 glasses of water. You all drink? You all do that? How many of you, by show of hands, can tell me that you all drink 8 glasses of water? How many of you? You? Because you know about it. <laughs> Good, huh? 8 glasses of coffee. 8 glasses of coffee. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee doesn't substitute for water. Yeah? Some, someone once said, yeah, yeah, water means drinking all these beverages is water. No, actually, no, it's not. You know, there's a, there's a case of a lady who drinks nothing but orange juice, she ends up with a lot of liver problem. Okay? She thought or, or drinking orange juice, vitamin C is all water is good enough. No. It's not the same. They're drinking water. See, why eight glasses? Each glass is about 240 ml. And and some of the research out there says that on a typical day, because of metabolism, an average individual loses about 2.4 liters of water. So just to replace that 2.4 liters of water, you need to drink about 2.4 liters of water. And 240 ml in each glass times by 8 will give you about 2.4 liters of water. Do you understand? And if you're not drinking it, then your body is getting dehydrated. That's the first reason why you get dehydrated. But there's another reason why you get dehydrated. And that is because the water that you are drinking cannot be absorbed by your cells. It takes 
is very difficult and the reason is here. See, water in nature doesn't have this property, but the water that comes through your tap has this property. Understand that? In nature, because the water is allowed to expand, it's allowed to move the way it moves in rivers and streams. It doesn't move in narrow pipes. It doesn't get pressurized. So it has got a certain properties. But the way they process it, and they pump it through the pipes, the pipes are very narrow, there's a lot of right angle turn, the water is not given the ability and the flexibility to move and pick up energy and stuff, it gets compressed. It gets compressed together. As a result, it has some property. Okay? Now, why is that very important? Because more than 70% of our body is water. Blood is more than 80% water. So it makes sense that the water that you drink is very, very, very important. You cannot, until, I mean, nobody tells you about this in school. Yeah, you think any water is good enough, but it goes... The brain is about 90% water. If you, if you get dehydrated, what happens to you, you know? Besides getting heat stroke and all that, you become delirious, you can't think. You know why? Because the brain's ability to send the signals gets short-circuited. Because the brain is 90% water and you need that water. Okay? So this is what happens, okay? Uh, this guy, this is some expert, don't take my word for it, yeah? Because this is some of the experts. This guy called Batman Gelji. Okay, wrote this book. And his book was called, You Are Not Thirsty, uh, You Are Not Sick, You Are Thirsty. Don't treat, don't treat a thirst with medication. That was his tagline. Okay? You are not sick, you are thirsty, don't, don't treat thirst with medication. He wrote this, chronic cellular dehydration is the root cause of death, aging, and most de major degenerative diseases of the human body. Now the reason why you are dehydrated, one is because you are not drinking enough water, and two, the water that you are drinking is not absorbed. If you drink one liter of water, it sits in your stomach, just there, and passes out. And the reason is because it is not small enough to get absorbed. What do I mean by that? Watch this. This is what happens. Water that comes through your tap, the molecules bunch up together. 15 to 20 molecules. The surface tension is very tight, they stick to each other. So, in your, in your cells, in your body, the cells have got membrane. And the membranes have got gaps, small little gaps. And the gaps are called aquaporin. You can do a research on this about aquaporin. And aquaporin is one molecule thick, the gap. So if you have a bunch of molecules sitting outside, sticking to themselves, about 15 to 20 molecules, they sit outside, they can't go in. You understand? They can't go in. So most of the time, they just sit there, very little gets absorbed, and the rest gets passed out. In fact, the cells don't get enough water. But once they get processed, okay, by this machine, because of the electricity that passes through the, the plates, uh, later I'll tell you about the technology, and the water becomes micro clustered. Now incidentally, this technology was made to mimic what happens in nature. So it is not going against nature, right? Because they studied what happens in nature because there are some places in this world, or seven different places, where the water has this property. And in trying to understand how the water gets this property, they figure out how it happens. That the Earth's magnetic field kind of does something to the water. And the movement and all does something. So that's why this machine creates that. So the water that comes out of this machine, after it has been processed, is microclustered. It now is split into a bunch up with about five to six molecules per cluster. Okay? Because it's only five to six molecules per cluster, when it sits outside, it's like this, and it's able to go in very fast. So typically, when you give this water, when you drink this water, you will experience, oh, this water is very light. You can drink one liter, you won't feel bloated. You sometimes will get a hit rush because the water gets absorbed by the system to the cell, just like that, very fast. Yeah? That's what happens. So, if I, if I just turn around and tell you, let me show this to you. I'm going to show you two glasses of water, one is microclustered, one is not, okay? This is tap water. This is what we call big clusters. 15, 20 molecules per cluster. Yeah? This is microclustered. 5 to 6 molecules per cluster. Microclustered, big cluster. 15 to 20 molecules, 5 to 6 molecules. Can you see the difference? Come on, are you sure you can't? Come on, I can see very clearly. <laughs> no, you can't, right? And I said, you've got to take my word for it. Would you, would you be happy with that? No. Okay. So we found a way in which to demonstrate to you, just like all the others. All the others, you saw the property. Are you convinced they have that property? Are you convinced they've got the, the what you call antioxidant property and it's alkaline? You are, right? In a similar way, you're going to get convinced by this. Okay? So let me do this. 
So okay, I'm going to try like how Desmond does it. So we will we will put two. If you don't need, okay, I'm getting lost as to which one is which one is my and which one is not. So let's do this, okay? I okay. Know you can see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> I can, you know, but I'm not wearing my X-ray glasses yet. <laughs> okay, so we've got one. This is nothing but just a tea bag. Okay, not manufactured by, by us, it is <laughs> some China brand green tea bag, okay, we just trying to use, what we're trying to do is we're trying to show you what my, the effect of microclustering is, okay, so just pretend that this layer that you see outside is like a cellular membrane, okay, and what's inside is like, what's inside yourself. So we've got two, two identical uh, tea bags, okay, and one of it I'm going to pour tap water, I'm going to make tea. Incidentally, can you touch this, tell me, is it hot? No, is it room temperature? Is it room temperature, right? Is it room temperature, right? They are all room temperature. So, it's, so it's, it's common, same kind of water, same temperature. Excuse me. So if I want to make if I want to make tea, I take this and I pour this water into it. What do I get? I get nothing. I get nothing. Sure. <laughs> I get nothing because why? You need heat to make tea. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to pour it inside here. And in a short while, you'll start seeing that something happens, something changes. Can you see the difference? Is there a difference? Is there a difference? Can you see that this is beginning to pull out the tea? Whether this is not? Right? Because the heat has the effect of separating the molecules. When the molecules go far enough, you know, they, they become steam. And that's why they, they float up, right? So that's what happens with microclustering. Now you think that oh this tea bag is stuck, that's why it didn't it didn't work. Right? So I'm gonna I'm gonna take this tea bag, okay, which was it was taking out the tea and I'm gonna pour this tap water into it. See, nothing is happening, right? Am I right? Can you see nothing is happening? So I'm going to take this and I'm going to try it again because we think, oh, there's some, some sort of miracle that I'm doing. This is again tap water. Like, I mean, this is uh, kangen water. So I'm just going to show you because to show you that there's no color in this. Yeah, it is not because of this that you get this color. Can you see what's happening? And I can do this again and again and again because this water is microclustered. It is able to penetrate the tea bag in an instant and produce tea. It is the, the molecules are not sticking to each other, they can penetrate the tea bag and pull out the tea extract very fast. If that's not convincing enough, let's do something else, okay? So I'm going to do this, you know, take more tea out, let's pull it out as much as I can. And then I'm going to take two more cups. Okay, and I'm going to take this, I'm going to mess myself up a bit, and I'm going to like squeeze a bit of essence. Ooh. Yeah, because I'm, I've kind of like messed up the tea bag. <laughs> it's okay, never mind, it will still work. So I'm going to divide this uh, essence, just the tea essence, into two, two cups, yeah? Can you come over here and tell me which one has got more, which one has got less? Huh? If it doesn't have, it doesn't have. If it's the same, it's the same. <laughs> which one has got more? Yeah? That has got more? It's so, alright, that has got more, alright. I come, the young man, young man, come, stay here. I want you to do some magic for me. I want you to take this tap water and choose whichever cup you think has got more and face the audience and pour it into it. Just all of it. Yeah? So what have you done? You've diluted the tea. Right? Now do the same thing for this. In front of them. Just do the same thing. Wow. You've got magic hands. <laughs> Thank you. Give him a round of applause please. That's very proud. Almost the same amount of essence. Yeah. One water is pulled up a bit more and the other one can't do anything. Because the microclustering effect is that it is able to go into the essence and pull up more tea. That's why it's microclustered. Now you're convinced it's microclustered, there is a difference. Yeah? Because if I try to explain any other way, you won't. Because you can't see. The other alternative is go and put it under the electron microscope and check it. If you don't have, because so this is the best way. So are you convinced it's microclustered? Now, 
Think about this. So what's the effect of being microclustered? It is able to penetrate your cells a lot faster. But not only that, it does something else too. If you use this water and you cook your food, any vegetables or anything, when you are eating food, what do you want from the food? You want the enzymes and the nutrients. This water is then able to go into it, penetrate it and pull it out much more, like what it did to the tea bag. Pull it out much faster and much more. So the soup that you make or the curry or whatever it is you're cooking, it's not just flavorsome, it has got a lot more nutrients and you know, and, and, and all the good stuff that you actually need. So indirectly, you end up absorbing. It is able to pull it out and then bring it into your cells. So the end, your cells end up getting a lot more nutrition out of the stuff that you eat. A uh, nutritionist once gave a talk and I was listening to it and he said, the cells to be healthy, to be optimal in function, need four things. They need water. They need oxygen. They need glutathione, which is produced by the cells themselves. Okay? And then they need nutrients. Think about this which is one of the reasons why this water is able to bring about such tremendous benefit in health because it is water which goes in, the cells need water it has got hydroxyl ions which is the, which is the antioxidant property and hydroxyl ions are chemical symbol is OH- when you combine two OH- together you get a H2O plus another O an extra O and that O is oxygen the second in the formula that this guy was talking about your cells need water, need oxygen, and this water gives the cell the oxygen. It hydrates it. And third part of it is it needs nutrients, a lot of nutrients. And because of this water, your body absorbs a lot more nutrients. Is that good or what? Is that good? Now you understand why just by changing the water, there's so much of health benefits. Okay? That's what happens. So you've seen that. Okay? This is what happens. Microclustered or not microclustered? You see, in nature, the water is microclustered generally. It is. But in, in cities, they have to process the water, then they have got to pump it under very high pressure so that it can travel all the way up the pipe. Especially in Singapore where we, all of us are living in high-rise buildings, right? It's got to go 20, 30 stories high. So it's got to be under pressure. That pressure, that compacting, causes all the molecules to kind of like stick together. And the water has the property that it has. Okay? Now, so, now, is this a miracle healing water or what? It is, because it was made to mimic what is found out there in nature. In nature today, there are seven different places, I'm going to name you a few. In Roots in France, you will see these people queuing up. Why do they do that? Because when they go and collect the water and they drink it, they soak in it, they bathe in it, they find that the cure is miraculous. Of course, some people attribute it to the divine, right? So, oh, thank you, but yeah, anyway. That's what they think. In, in uh, Nordano, in Germany, it's also another place where they go and collect the water. Also has similar properties. In La Cote, Mexico is another place where people queue up and collect this water. And then Narana, India, that's a wrong picture, but never mind. <laughs> Narana, in, Narana in India and one more is uh, Zamzam in Saudi Arabia. And there's two more other places, I can't recall where they are. Now, all those people living in those areas, they live very long. They live very healthily. But you and I can't make a trip all the way there. So the manufacturer of this, Mr. Hironari Oshiro, after he found out about this Russian technology and all that, managed to produce a machine which actually gives the property that all these three property healing properties that these waters have to the water that you're drinking so that you don't have to travel all the way there is that good or what that's all it is that's all it is okay so the kind of machines we have there are all these whichever model that you buy whichever machine that you uh, you think of getting they all have the seven different water that that is produced. Why seven? I'll explain to you in a short while. In a very short while. Okay? The process is very simple. It takes the ordinary tap water. By the way, is all this information good for you now? Yes. As I told you, whatever information I've given you, if at the end of the day it opens up your mind, that it and it causes a little bit of a lifestyle change in you, it would have been worth it, right? This time that you spent here. Am I right? Yes. Thank you. Okay, this is what happens. The water that comes from your pipe gets fixed to a machine, the first layer is a filter, a very, very, very high quality filter which can filter about 12,000 liters of water. And this filter will remove, first of all, it will remove chlorine. Why? Because chlorine is carcinogenic, meaning it is cancer causing. It will remove sediments and bacteria and stuff, it will remove odor. 
So at the end of it, you will get water which is clean, but still has the nutrients and minerals that you need. Because water must have the minerals. The body needs the minerals to perform the metabolic function. Okay? So it, after that, it goes into this electrolysis chamber. That is the heart of this machine, which is the highest quality that you can ever find in the market, which is why this machine stands out head and shoulders above any in the market. Don't let anyone fool you because there's a lot of misinformation out there. This machine is produced with very high grade titanium plates coated with platinum, medical grade. And, and the technology, until today, they can't match it, which is why the result you get from drinking the water from this machine, you cannot get it from any other machine. That is a fact. If you all are interested in finding out more, I can tell you all later, but that becomes a bit too technical. Okay? That's it. So, after it goes through the electrolysis process, the plates are charged negatively and positively. One side, it attracts the alkaline buffers. The other side, it attracts the acidic buffers, which is not needed by the body. Fluoride is an acidic buffer, and fluoride is cancer-causing. So that gets attracted to the acid water and also it doesn't get into the drinking water. There's no filtration equipment out there that we know which can filter, which can filter away fluoride. But this machine does it because it splits it out. Okay? Once the water goes inside there, the ionizing process, it splits the water into two. One side becomes alkaline, the other side becomes acidic. And by a proprietary software they have inside, they control the level of acidity and the alkalinity. Okay? So it happens. So then you also get clean water, okay, I'll tell you, I'll, in, in a short while I'll explain to you why so many different types of water, because every water that comes out from this machine is useful, is valuable, okay. You get three pH of drinking water, 8.5, 9 and 9.5, okay. And then you get beauty water, which is a skin pH, which when you put it on your skin, it replaces all your toners, so you don't have to waste money buying toners for all you ladies out there, okay. Now this is a machine, that's how it looks. You can see samples of it outside. This is the uh, SD501. Okay? We say five types of water but seven different pH. Each button is like a coffee making machine. The water, you on the tap, you press any one of this setting and you will get the water that you want. On the drinking spot, you get the drinking water and then there will be another spot at the back which will bring out the, the acidic water. Okay? Beauty water and then you have a strong acid. So as we go on to it, let me just prepare something so that uh, we can get ready for the next part of the demonstration. Is it good so far? Yes. Is it good so far? Thank you. Now, I'm going to do another demonstration. It's not the usual demonstration that we do <laughs> because we used to have cherry tomatoes so to make people taste it. But unfortunately today what has happened is that uh, we don't have cherry tomatoes. But I'm hoping, I've never done this before and I'm hoping that the results you can see, yeah? What we're going to do is we're going to pour, this is just tomatoes that was bought from the market, yeah? Uh, just point to one, which one? That I'm going to pour tap water, this one or this one? You're the youngest here. This one? Okay, I'll pour tap water here. Because it's just going to simulate how you would, how you would actually uh, wash, sorry how you actually wash your tomatoes or vegetables, okay? We're just using that to represent any any uh, vegetables that you would wash. And on the other one, I'm going to pour this water. Now this is, this is of pH 11.5, okay? The same thing, by the press of a button, we take the tap water, and the tap water gets converted to this higher pH alkaline water, okay? So I'm going to pour this into this. And we're just going to leave it there for a while, okay? This is tunnel water, this is tap water. Okay, it's just simulating how you would wash the thing. So I'm just going to leave it there just for five minutes, yeah? And then we come back to this. So you've got all the varying waters, huh? By now you know this. Free radicals, high acidity and dehydration as the root cause of all disease. We know that. So we've got a solution. How easy will it be if you got one solution, one simple solution, not going out there and buying different, different, different products. One simple solution, at a stroke of genius, you can clear all of this major root causes of all of degenerative diseases. Would that be good? Yes. Would that be good? Really? Okay. Would you take that action if you find that it's good? Okay. Now, all we, all we try and tell you is this. Free radicals, high acidity, dehydration. The solution is very simple. The machine. It produces water which is highly alkaline, highly, uh, sorry, antioxidant in nature. 
he will stop the free radical damage. He will neutralize any free radical in your system and, and stop it from causing the damage to your cells. Because if left unchecked, these free radicals will damage your cells. Then you have got high acidity. So how do you eradicate it? Because water is highly alkaline. It's a glass of water. That's all it is. Yeah? Dehydration, microcluster water. So one solution eradicates the major, major, major root cause. And it is major because, and we know it works, because we have got testimonies of that. We've got even people, you will find it unbelievable if we tell you, if they come and speak, and you can find all this testimony elsewhere in the in the net and everything, and we can show you. Today, we will keep it to this first, okay? Now, that's it. I don't want to go into this first, because, okay, just one guy maybe. This guy is called uh, Hiromi Shinya, okay? His, his qualification is there. How many of you know of any doctor who has done about 370,000 chronoscopies? Yeah? So he's an ex he must be an expert, yeah? He must be. He's a chief of endoscopy of Beth Israel Medical Center in New York. He's also the professor of surgery in Albert Einstein College. He's so famous that he has actually got a procedure, a chronoscopy procedure named after him. It is called the Shinya method because he pioneered that method of non-invasive and trying to clear the colon. So it's a chronoscopy as well expert and he's written a couple of books. One of them is called the micro factor. Micro factor. The other one is called the enzyme factor. In both of it he states this. Unequivocally he states this. I have a Kangan water machine in my New York medical office and this is the water I drink and give to my patients. And he goes on to say that when he adds Kangan water to his treatment protocol of his patients, what would take six months to cure, he would cure them in about six weeks because of this water. And he went on to give a lot of other pictures, which I'm not. You can ask the person who brought you here to show you pictures of coronoscopes where they actually cured it. The other person, the other organization which strongly, strongly endorses this is the American Anti Cancer Institute. 